do it. Hello, friends. Hello, heathens. It's fucking cold in Michigan. Oh. And I'm not mad about it, but it is fucking cold. <laughs> you know, I'm trying not to be mad about it, but like, because I don't like sweating, but like also, God, I'm cold. <laughs> fucking cold you know why i decided i'm buying for myself for christmas this year i'm buying and fur line like crocs. well i have yeah yeah that too <laughs> but i'm buying fur line fur line crocs i love my crocs and it's getting too cold for my crocs so i have to invest in the fur line ones because i'm a croc person now <laughs> <laughs> that's where our life has led us to crocs <laughs> i've I already bought the fur line ones so I blame this all on the baby and you because we went into the croc store and friggin' wherever we were at for mm -hmm. spring break this last year and I have experienced the comfort of crocs and so now I need the fur line ones. It's a necessity. <laughs> it's what makes me happy. Well, that's just like the same thing like I had to buy this. Oh, that Starbucks cup. She got the Starbucks cup. I can't stop touching it. It feels oh, so like, good on your finger. It's so good. <laughs> it's so pretty. And the funny thing is, it matches my phone. Aesthetic. You're very aesthetic. Also, it's a it's a very light aesthetic for you, which is it is. Nicole and I were just talking about this. It's like people are gonna start thinking we're going soft, but then you know what I just thought is that you can't do all this work and not have a healthy balance of dark and light. Do you know what I mean? Like that's the yeah. whole point, right? Right. I like some deadpan humor, but I also love some Christmas throw up in my house sometimes, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, I love the most scariest horror movie ever, yes. but I also love Disney. <laughs> but I also <laughs> love Disney. <laughs> my playlist in my car goes from heavy metal slash scream to... Mm -hmm. to um let it go let yeah. it go i was trying to think of the one that megra sings in hercules oh uh, um, i no, i'm not what uh i know <laughs> it's right there um i forgot if there's a price for rotten judgment <laughs> oh it's a prize already done that. yes <laughs> oh i love that song <laughs> well nicole Moving on, what are we talking about today? We are talking about the four agreements. The four agreements. We talked about them often. We bring them up often. But we want to do a soft dive within this season because of all the work we've been doing interpersonally, right? The four agreements are going to help a lot with everything that we've already gone over this season. And then in this next season, we're going to do like a big probably four-parter, three-parter, something like that, breakdown, big breakdown, because there's so much to this uh, other than just like the four agreements themselves and just their soft ex explanations. <laughs> and what I would like to ask you guys to do is um, <clears throat> maybe over this winter when you're stuck inside or you're, you know, in the car for longer times because of snow, Either download the audio book or get the book and read it. Uh, read it at least once because I will tell you right now, when you read it again, you're going to be like, did I ever, did I, did I even read it? Huh. That's did exactly I, what I said. Did, did I read it read? and I was like, did I even read this book? Yeah. With the Medela effect and I like, you know, it changed <laughs> in between the times I read it. The amount of times I do that with books, especially like these big feelings books and all these new concepts, I'm, and I read it again, I'm always like, I don't think I read anything but the title. I think I read the title. That's what I read. That's, that's all I know is the title. I know that it's called The Four Agreements and that's it. Who's it by? I don't know. What do they mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. I knew. Nope. Oh, you want me to talk about that? Sorry, I didn't read it. Oh, I, I thought you said that. you read it. No, no. no mm -mm. I did not. <laughs> that was an mm -mm. illusion. <laughs> <laughs> it's an illusion. <laughs> I read the prequel to The Four Agreements. <laughs> <laughs> I, read, I read the synopsis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> and then the second time I wrote it, I was like, oh my God. I don't, what the... 
it, it's crazy. The rereading books that you've already read, right? And you think you understood the more that you get deeper into this world and like even into your own interpersonal space and just start really learning yourself and start like sifting through all the shit to get to the gold. It's yeah. crazy when you go to read another book and you can understand things that you clearly just skipped over because you were like, that's, I don't understand. That's not for me. Keep moving on. It's crazy. It is crazy. Because we've done this so many times with so many books, like even with uh, with The Power of Now. God, every time I read that, I'm like, did I even read this book? I'm planning on reading it for a third time. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I think I've read it three times and I'm like, I should read that again. Yeah. Because now I feel like I should read it again just to like, you know. Reading the four agreements, the one thing that really hit me, especially in the beginning, was about our domestication. Mm. And I was like, that's it. I don't want to be domesticated. Like, you can start to see how, like, exactly how we train a dog, we've been trained ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I had always said that, you know, kids are kind of like dogs up until about three or four because there's no communication right like it's kind of the same feeling you're trying to get them to do something when they're still little and they don't understand anything and they're not communicating right we don't have that verbal kind of thing and then like reading that part I was like fuck (laughs) you're like wait what (laughs) Don't you love getting smacked in the face with something that, you know, you kind of know, but like you don't know. And then Mm -hmm. uh, it just smacks you in the face and you're like, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? (laughs) Right. I'm sorry. Did I hear you right? (laughs) I've only read you three times, but I really need you to say it one more time. (laughs) Just one more time. Just one more, please. (laughs) Can you not use the word in the definition, please? I'm going to need an adult to help me with this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. You read the book, you guys. Read the book before this next year. Because, again, we're going to go into it deeper. And I think if you read it once, you read it twice, like, great for you. Like, go you if you can read it twice in that amount of time. Because, like, it takes me a while to read books like this. Because I try, I, yeah, sometimes I have to sit on things and let it sink in before I can keep moving. I gotta, mm-hmm. like, pull it apart and put it back together again so I can make it make sense. So, read mm-hmm. the book uh, before this next year. And then we'll go into it deeper. But today, we're gonna, we're gonna um, explain the four agreements. I also have where the four agreements, like, came from. Just a quick little thing. Because I you know, me and my fucking history nerd over here, I had to know where this was coming from. <laughs> right. Um, and then I think we're going to go into ways that it can change your life, things that you could experience during it, especially when you start doing the four agreements and really start making it a thing for yourself and then mm-hmm. how to start implementing it. And then at the v- very end, um, Nicole's going to give us a prayer. Um, She's going to pray over us. <laughs> I'm going to pray over all of the heathen children. <laughs> Which, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I will happily accept your prayer, my lady. <laughs> I will happily accept alms, alms, alms for the poor. For the poor. <laughs> God, we're, we're walking beams. <laughs> we're, earlier I was singing, beams of the poor. <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> I forgot the other ones. I know me too. I only honestly know that first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like best way to start with this, which we say this all the time, but what are the four agreements? So the four agreements are as simply put. Always be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. And always do your best. So. um, All right, we're done. Yeah, and done. And (laughs) see. All right, we'll see you next week, Cubans. Oh, was that the, that was your prayer? Was all right, we're done. Yeah, we're done. Amen. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, I read that his goal in giving us the four agreements was freedom from self-limiting beliefs with, uh, which bring suffering and limitations to one's life. It's the intent behind the book is to help us explore freedom, happiness, and love. Mm -hmm. And I love that. No, it's really nice to like actually uh, read something that is quite simple to read, especially when I'm studying alchemy and you get books that are like this thick. Literal encyclopedias. Right. So this was a really cool like deep dive for me because like it was so simple, but then as I'm implementing them in my daily life and being super aware and super active about doing it, you find a, you can start getting aware of how many times you do it in a day or in a sentence. Yeah. And then you're like, um, and then trying to implement, like, even to redirect, like, oh, if I said something like, uh, well, that person doesn't know any better or something like that. I could be like, well, that's kind of spreading poison. So we're going to, you know, like meeting them exactly where they are. It's helping me to like see the person and at least accept them where they are in their journey in this life human being right because like I'm no better than anybody else right right so and me judging somebody else is just meaning that I'm judging myself that harshly and I think that was the big thing that I learned is that how hard how hard I judge myself oh yeah absolutely because I feel like even like going into this even in a soft dive you know it still feels like deep dive in a way where it's like obviously we could go there's always a deeper end but it's like for me it was like I tell myself because what I do a lot of the time which I know you do too and I this is in here I had this as a suggestion because I feel like this helps me a lot is I call myself out a lot out loud even if it is to myself or to Nicole or whomever Mm -hmm. I will say it out loud. So now what happens is when I say it out loud and it happens to me by myself, when my thoughts are rolling, I'll hear myself say it to myself. Like you're assuming, don't assume, or you're taking yeah. that personally. Don't take it personally. Or like, like I said, if we, you know, I do something or say something to Nicole, that's very clearly me taking something personally or me assuming I'll say, I'm sorry, I'm assuming, or, you know, like, and mm -hmm. then it calls me out to myself so that I'm aware of it as well. And just like being aware of that has made me realize how much we let our thoughts control us and consume us. And like, like he said, those self-limiting beliefs and it, it makes you very, very aware of like how mean you are to yourself and mm -hmm. how you create all this misery for yourself. Like, because you, you, you just allow your thoughts to run fucking rampant, right? Well, rabid, rabid. Well, rabid would be more mad, and I think, right? I think so. I you'd be more mad, and then rampant would be wild. Yeah, there you go. We want rampant. <laughs> That's the word we want. I mean, we could use rabid too. Let's be honest. There's no, some, I agree. There's I agree. some That's madness. Absolutely, <laughs> mad hatter. <laughs> um, that's why I like Dionysus. Right. Mm. Um. So I wanted to start off like at the beginning of the book when he talked about um, the smoky mirror and the dream and where this is where we need to start because we need to start kind of like, and I know people have taken this in trending form, you know, awake, like waking up from that dream or just acknowledging that we are, that there are things that we can't see that are happening. They're at a different vibration. There are mental building that we have or the mental filter that we have on ourselves is not allowing us to see the whole truth. It's seeing the truth through. It's just like a filter that we put on our face with Snapchat. Like all of a sudden I've got really nice makeup on and horns, right? So, and that's the picture that I take of myself. 
but it's just, it's nothing more than a filter or a mask, right? So the first part of it is realizing that you are asleep and there's things that you can't see. And I think just the awareness of that helps us be aware of it. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Because I feel like a lot, he talks a lot in the book too about how like everything's a mirror and we hear mm -hmm. that a lot, but we don't, I feel like I never understood it. And it was frustrating right. at first hearing that like, well, that's just mirroring you. That's just a reflection of you. And it's like, how the hell, like in the moment, of course, it doesn't feel good. It's not helpful in the moment because you're like already in your emotions and everything. So like hearing that and being able to break it down in this way that he does through the agreements and everything, it makes more sense. It feels better to be like, oh, that's right. It is just a, I, I would be, I'm just mirroring myself. Like I could put that out in the universe. It's going to come back and show itself to me, you know, mm -hmm. like you start to realize all these things. You see all these things from simply doing the four agreements and sticking to a practice that's this simple mm -hmm. I agree because it's and it's hard when you're mirroring when you think about mirroring or even a reflection like we talk a lot about how like the world is a reflection of what you're thinking right and it's hard to see it's hard to see that everybody is me kind of thing right yes and the way that actually works is because we're projecting onto them. So yes. like if you and I are having like a squabble and I'm in my head and I'm like, well, she doesn't blah, 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 blah. Right. And then I'm like, no, because that's exactly what I am. That's my fear. That's not your fear. I'm projecting onto you. And I've created a whole scenario in my head, even had a argument and we made up. And then we bought each other coffee, you know, like the whole thing, yes. like I have a whole scenario in my head. Right. And then I see you again and I'm like, Hey, remember that coffee we got? Like, no, no. What are you talking about? All right. Oh, that's right. I haven't even, we haven't even started this. <laughs> yeah. So it's, and all I can say is that the longer that you stay in it, the more it'll show itself to you. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see it. You just got to give it time. Absolutely. I agree with that. Um, Before we go into like the agreements, can I really quick give the little uh where this actually came from? Yeah. Because I, you know, I, I get I into rabbit, it. I get into rabbit holes, man, of research. And one of our friends recently, um, who I haven't seen in a while, he was like, you really like to research, don't you? And I'm like, listen, I do. That's why I love the podcast so much is because I get to get into all these different articles and start reading stuff. And I, one of the things where I was reading about like, you know, um, the guy and all this other stuff, I was like, where the hell is this even coming from? Because like, I don't know, there's just, there's centuries worth of words out in the ether yeah, and it can't just come from nowhere. Right. So this is all based on ancient Toltec wisdom. I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, which is a philosophy of way of or way of life that provides us with tools to develop a connection with our own inherent wisdom and divinity. So the Toltecs of ancient Mexico understood the illusionary nature of reality and realized that what we perceive as reality is merely the collective unconscious agreements of society. Mm -hmm. Toltec wisdom reminds us that words have power and the Toltecs were a civilization civilization that lived in southern Mexico around 900 AD which oh, I'm like wow. damn this has been passed down that long that's crazy they were a race of people who found it really important to preserve the knowledge of the ancient ones and ancient ones with to them were like the spiritual teachers the scholars the all these that kind of group of people um and I could go on and on about this, but honestly, I would say if that interests anyone, definitely look into the Toltecs and their history because, again, I could have kept going. It was so, I have articles saved for me to read after the podcast just because I thought that was so fascinating that this came from their wisdom from 900 AD. Mm -hmm. Like, what? <laughs> well, and I That's feel so like cool. we don't 
we don't even talk about like when you're looking at history especially 900 AD we think only of Europe we don't think yes. anything of the Americans in Mexico the Native Americans the freaking boot all of all of these religions and cultures and everything that just like have all this like really ancient history and knowledge passed down and it's like it's so cool it's so cool <laughs> I absolutely there's a lot of stuff in here that made me really like a you know where like my curses lie and my poisons lie and then also how we pass it on to other people as well so if I have a poison I'm spitting it at other people and it mm -hmm. You know, it's it's cool because you're seeing it, but then also really hard because, you know, like how much poison have I given out in the world? Right. Like so. And again, you know, we forgive ourselves. We were unaware. I get it. Like and all I can do is as I go forward, I try to do just be a better human. Right. Yeah. Um, You're doing your best. You're doing your best with what you got. Four right agreements. that's right four agreements <laughs> all right so let's do you have any more before we get into the first no. one no i like i said i could have kept going but i kept it short and sweet i just took some little things that i thought were really cool because like i said if you want to look it up it's the toll text t-o-l-t-e-c look it up yourself i could do a whole we could do a whole damn episode on that so no i'm good and it's not a bad idea i wonder if they're if the race is still survived and we could like meet somebody oh my god that'd be so cool that still like you know Is... does this wisdom kind of thing mm -hmm. that would be really cool yeah so no that's i'm good we can move on to the agreements and explaining them and all of it i'm good moving on okay baby. what is the first agreement kathy <sighs> um be impeccable with the word okay so what I have behind this simply is that this is a reminder to be more careful about what you say and say things that you actually mean and then do the things that you say you'll do. Because when we don't, we evade the truth and we end up hurting ourselves. So you talking about spitting poison out, we're not immune to the poison. Mm -mm. <laughs> the poison we spit out can come right back and 99% of the time it does and it hurts us. And so being impeccable with your word is like not using your words against yourself and telling yourself stories that don't believe you, that don't serve you. This is to me, this word really calls out our gaslighting to ourselves. This agreement yeah. does as well, mm -hmm. because we, again, we've talked about this multiple times, but we spend more time with ourselves than anybody else. Right. Cause we're in here all the time. There and so are. being impeccable with your word isn't only outer it's inner too. It's, in mm -hmm. and out it's both so that's what i have for that well and you know impeccable with your word too is like uh we if you're saying it to somebody else you know like if i say you're ugly i'm just saying i'm ugly do you know what i mean like it's it's only from my perspective it has nothing to do with you it has everything to do with how i see myself and the world and I think that's really what, like, we get hurt because these people say things and it's, we don't necessarily have to because it's how they talk to themselves. So if you see somebody that is so particular or so critical, you know that that's how they talk to themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they don't change the dialect. It's the same. Yeah. Um, I feel like knowing that too also like helps you to start being a softer person in the way of like you start caring about people more and you can start understanding it instead of doing the second agreement but you, you start caring about people because you're like holy shit dude like you talk to yourself like that you don't say that obviously out loud but I do think it sometimes you know people say these things about other people that are just so gross and I'm like I feel really bad for them instead of being like, ew, you're nasty. Like that was a horrible thing to say to me. I'm like, damn, that really, it makes me sad for them because you looking at somebody and saying, wow, they're so ugly or wow, they dress like a whore. Cause you know, people love to slut shame. 
it mm-hmm. makes me feel bad for them because it's like, dude, you either think that about yourself or you think that you're not as good as that. And it, it, it you can't do these agreements and not be softer. I agree. Well, and see, even that, like you, somebody put a curse on them at some time. Like if I told you you couldn't sing or that you were stupid and you believed me, then that's a curse. So then you do the rest of your life without singing or without being smart because somebody told you that when you were younger. Right. So like, even with like slut shaming, like a lot of us that had been brought up in the like eighties was very much like that. It was slut shaming. Right. Like if I was a whore and I had multiple sex partners or I showed too much skin, I was either asking for it or I would never be loved. I was never valued as a person, right? If I didn't have my virtue or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And we carry that on with us. And then not only that is when we procreate, then however we were domesticated, we domesticate our child the same way. Yes. Think about how a child is at two and three, how free they are, how happy they are, right? We don't nurture that. We punish and reward daily, hourly, like, oh, you did that bad, you did this good. You did that bad, you did this good. And how we get addicted to getting the reward or not getting the reward and to the punishment as well. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say something about, he talked about impeccable, like where the word came from. And it was a Greek It comes from a Greek, uh, the Greek language. And I forget what the actual word is. Uh, But the, what I'm trying to like articulate is peccable means sin. So impeccable means without sin. Mm. Impeccable means without sin. Yes, because it's the in part means without and then peccable is sin. Oh, there you go. You got it. Uh, To sin is to go against yourself. So anything that you go against your own word, your own rules, your own uh, authenticity really is a sin. Yes, yes. Mm who you truly are right and which is what we're trying to uncover we want to be our most authentic selves right because we want to shine in the world and when we're not is when we're suffering and when we are poisoned and then we spew that poison to other people right um being impeccable with your word is communicating to other people and to yourself exactly what you're seeing and exactly what you're feeling yeah Um, what's in is without and what's out without is in mm -hmm. that freaking saying alone i feel like this helps explain so much because it's one of those sayings again we hear all the time this is a perfect way to explain it you know Mm -hmm. um i'm trying to think when you read this being impeccable with your word is one of those things where like gossip is the one thing that they talked about it being poison. And the problem with this is that I found is that we have found connection in gossip. So like if I'm talking and we're talking about something else or somebody else, because, Oh my God, did you see what she was wearing? Blah, 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 or whatever. Right. So we're feeling better because we're connecting on this other poor person's choices that had nothing to do with us right mm-hmm. like that's what they felt good and that's what they like their our opinion of them right um and that's hard because you can see how like addicted we come to that kind of talk so much so that we've made a whole reality series of them right like whether it's the Kardashians, whether it's somebody else, like we sit there and we judge them and gossip about them. And those ones, I think, 
it's almost like those are a little safer because they're not actual people. <laughs> I know, right? I was going to say, I feel like those ones, it's like my, I always joke that it's my version of um, drama. That's the only kind of drama I will allow in my life is fake drama from TV. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's my daily dose, quote, unquote. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing is like those, you know, it's almost like they put themselves out there for that kind of thing. But then we also have to be careful because of the slippery slope. Yeah. That's still how we see ourselves. I feel like we experience this a lot in the hair world. um, And it's not to down anybody in the hair world. It's just to talk about it very openly that the hair world is full of a lot of egos. It's full of a lot of gossip. It's what I call the constant game of telephone. And I call it out the minute that it's happening. I'm like, it's a game of telephone is all I say, because I can't, I try to end it with myself and not carry it on from this telephone to this telephone, you know, because it's like, think about, we all played that when we were kids. And if you Mm -hmm. haven't, uh, basically you get in a line and the first person says a sentence, a full sentence, and then you got to keep saying it, whispering it to each other down the line. And by the end, when the person at the end tells the first person what was said, it's usually not even close no, to what it, happened or what was e- said. It evolved or morphed, right? Mm-hmm. And then on top of it, lately, what I've been doing to try to combat it too is I've just been saying it's all perspective. We all have different lenses. We all have different perspectives, you know, because gossip no. is, it's really hard to combat And it's really hard to stay out of in the way of like, you're not doing it as well. You're not joining in because it's like fun to talk about somebody. Because like when you really think about it, it's it's not. I can't say that there's one person on this planet that I hate enough to talk bad about them because ultimately I don't think there uh, there's anybody I've met that's horrible, horrible people that just don't deserve to even be here like how dare they breathe, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I don't feel like that, why would I talk shit about them? No, it's, you know, it's hard because sometimes like that's what we grew up with. We watched our parents do it. Like it's so normal. Mm -hmm. It's almost not normal to like not talk about it or not engage in it, you know, especially, you know, when they talk about like, oh, like our former salon and what they're doing and they got to like talk about all that. And it's like, okay, okay. I get it. Like it's entertaining. Um, in some way it's validating that, uh, we made the right choice or whatever. Right. So it's these little things that like, we need almost it has a it has ingredients of what we need to fulfill to feel better but it's almost like it's hollow and you're not getting the right substance of it you're only Mm -hmm. getting that like outer shell of it you're not getting the meat and the potatoes in it right like it's not doing you any good and that's why we have to keep doing it because it's like not giving it's not fulfilling our soul right i agree i agree i'm hot Hot. (laughs) i'm hot now it was cold and i'm hot it's fine you know there was this thing i feel like that was talked about a lot when i was a kid i don't know if it was for you but you know having like been around a lot of older people a lot of my life um older for me i'd say well, older than me is what I want to say. There it is. Uh, you know, there's always been this saying about how, you know, if you don't have anything nice, don't say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. And I guess I've never really realized how, while it didn't feel good getting told that at the time, that's true. Cause it's like, when, when, when you, when you're spewing like it's the best way to say is you're spewing poison and you wouldn't you don't want to say Mm -hmm. anything about somebody else that you wouldn't say about yourself or to their face either because honestly like words travel and words have power and that everything comes back to you you guys we say it all the time everything comes back Mm -hmm. so if you don't want that to come back to you don't say it well, like that, like if I say something bad about somebody else and, and then whether it's to their face or whether it's not, it gets to them. So then they're mad. So then they're throwing curses at me. So I'm really just 
starting this chain reaction of like you versus me like i'm gonna throw you poison you're gonna throw me poison we're gonna sit here and throw shit at each other until one of us gives up or dies i don't know but yeah you know like it but it's a tough one because you want to be so victimized by it and then you want to like well i gotta stand up for myself Mm -hmm. it's that ego gets in there too to be like well how dare you i'm offended and now And none of it, at the end of the day, even with all of it said and done, none of it matters. Exactly. None of it matters. It doesn't. It's not like you're going home and living that. (laughs) No. In fact, it just, you're carrying it with you longer. True. So now I got to carry it with me because I'm like, how dare they? They did this to me and I'm a victim and blah, blah, blah. And like, which it doesn't feel that way when you're in it. Like it feels more like a, like you're righteous, you know? When little do you know, you're actually creating and carrying around your own suffering. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Because who cares what anybody says, right? Like, well, we talk about it. You, you've given, you give really good, um, um, what's the, I can't think of the word that I want, but it's basically a scenario uh, to like, it describes a picture. You're carrying around this suitcase that weighs like twice your weight and somebody points at it and is like, Hey, you don't, you don't need that anymore. And you're like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Don't look at it. I need it. This suitcase I need comes all everywhere it. with me, all of it, everything in here. I need it. I can't live without it. And they're like, no, like literally you don't need any of it. And you're like, don't talk to me. Don't, don't look at it. Don't breathe in my, don't breathe. Don't No, No, it's, it's invisible. <laughs> no, you get addicted to carrying it around. I mean, even like, you know, um, carrying around emotional stuff that I had as a kid. And like, then all of a sudden, like I'm 46 and I go, oh, I don't have to carry this. Right. Like all of a sudden, A, you're aware that you're fucking carrying it. B, you're like, you oh, let me just put that down. You know how they say, like, you don't, say you get a cut in your hand or your leg and you, you didn't notice it. So you don't feel it until your brain registers that it was cut. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the same thing. Mm-hmm. You don't realize how tired your arm has been from carrying this thing around until you can see that you're carrying this thing around. And then your arm's like crying and screaming, like, please let it go. It hurts so bad. <laughs> it hurts so bad. Just let it go. Let it go. Speaking of letting it go, what is the second agreement? The second agreement is don't take anything personally. Ugh. I love this one. I hate it all at the same fucking time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but I want to take it personally. But it feels good to take it personally. Then I get to sit in my victimhood and cry to myself about how Absolutely. my life is so hard. It's what do you so mean that doesn't feel good? <laughs> What do you mean everybody doesn't hate me? Yeah, they do. (laughs) Yeah, they do. This one's hard because I feel like this one really, really makes you so hyper freaking aware of yourself and your thoughts. It's a hard, this one's the hard look in the mirror for me. Yeah, no, this one here was like, especially when he goes, even if somebody walked up to you and shot you in the head, don't take it personally. And I was like, how, sir? How? I'm sorry. <laughs> how am I not? Well, you how know, I... to play devil's advocate, we'd probably be able I to died. see it from a different perspective at that point. But <laughs> I say you, died. Say somebody <laughs> walked up and shot you and you lived through it. How are you not going to? How are you not going to take, take right, it? Like I was a victim to fill in the blank. Right. And even better, even better, we compare victimhoods. Oh, well, that happened to you. Guess what happened to me? And then we sit here and try to like one up each other to be like, well, you're not a victim. I am a victim because I stepped in the mud. 
Oh. Nothing anyone ever does or says is because of you or about you. It's nope. always about themselves. And if you guys are not aware of the fact that right now, Nicole and I, it's hard for us to get this one too sometimes. It's hard to accept sometimes because <laughs> things do feel very personal sometimes. They do. Mm-hmm. If somebody comes mm-hmm. up to, say I walked up to Nicole and I was like, you're a piece of shit. You suck. You stink. You're bad at this. I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you smell. I don't like your hair. All this stuff. How the hell are mm-hmm. you supposed to be like, okay, well, that's not about me. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Ultimately, it's, it's not. And it's not. That's the thing is like, I, I, and thank God, like really what it is, the more you work on yourself, the more you understand who you are. And when somebody comes up to you and says stuff like that, if, if you don't have, and they say this in the book, if you don't have the fertile ground for that seed to be planted, it's not going to grow. It's a seed on cement. Right. So if I know myself so well that when you come up to me and you say all of that poison, right? Right. I immediately, my guides, my brain, whatever it is, goes, this is not about you. And so I can sit in my power still because I'm like, okay, that's okay. You know, and you've heard me say this too before is like, sometimes you have to play the victim or you have to play the villain in somebody's movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I have found my, my place in some people's stories that I'm okay with playing the villain in your story because a, I love you that much. Right. I love you that much for you to like go ahead and like put me in this bad characterization, you know, because that's the way you're assuming you're assuming you're you're taking it personally, whatever. But like I knew and there was a particular time where this all came about. I knew at that moment that a everything was going to be fine in the long run. And it is. It's went full circle. Right. Mm-hmm. I knew that they needed this type of medicine to complete their journey through whatever they were going through, right? Mm-hmm. So these are the things that like why we work so intently on ourselves is for these moments that come up, whether it's, you know, a pleasant or not unpleasant experience that we're having, A, I looked at myself and I didn't find a wound there. And B, I realized that like what I was doing and what I was playing in that moment. And I sat down and I was okay with it. Right. I surrendered to the whole thing. You surrender. Oh. Well, and like along with this, we have to realize that when you don't take anything personally, There's more to it than just that. It's realizing that everything you do or you say is an expression of yourself. It's not because somebody else made you do it. You're responsible for your reactions to things because there is a part within you that maybe hasn't found peace yet when you're acting in a really bad way, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that happens from you, things you'd say or do, isn't because of somebody else controlling you and telling you to do it. Yes, you might have a painful memory that comes up and it triggers you. That's a trigger. That's trauma. We've talked about trauma. Go back to the episode and listen to it. That's when this plays in where it's like, you're doing that and then you're spewing the shit out and it's coming right back. And guess what? That's why we also say, that's why that's so, this is an important part to words are hard. Sorry. This is a important part to understanding, not taking anything personally is that we're also responsible for ourselves and our reactions to things. Mm-hmm. Cause it's hard to not take. And this is what we've been taught in our domestication of what to do and how to react. Right. Yep. Whether it's from TV, whether it's from, you know, social media, whether it's from our parents, our friends, our siblings, whatever. This is what we've been taught to do. Yeah. But I don't know. In my experience, I didn't feel necessarily great after I did it, after I, you know, and that was the whole 
beginning of the journey is like, you're not getting what you want. You're not getting joy. You're not getting happiness. In fact, you're just suffering. Right. And he put, he brought up a really good thing too, is that people are addicted to suffering too. And that's one of the things we have to really look at is that some people just like to suffer. They're addicted to it. Right. Right. And I really like that because I never thought about being addicted to a negative feeling. I never put those, I I get the, obviously I get the correlation, but like, I never put those two together because when we think of addiction, we think of like something physical. We think of food, we think of drugs, we think of working out, shopping, whatever. It's more of a material thing. I never thought that you could be addicted to like a feeling. So it was very interesting to me to, to like kind of go, oh. So of course then I'm like, well, what am I addicted to? What feeling is there a feel, you know, like you wanna I wanted to look into myself and see what I was addicted to. What am I what am I telling myself over and over again that I need to tell myself over and over again that is not helpful? Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense to me just because like the only reason we get addicted to things like shopping and all that in my head is because of our, our chemical makeup. It's, you know, an endorphin release. It causes feelings like, uh, you, you get in, like when we were talking about, um, I can't remember what episode it was, but you were talking about chocolate and the, uh, chemicals it releases. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? And I, yeah, I, didn't I think we were talking that. about happy feet uh, happiness or something oh uh, was something and you 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 broke happiness down, it was happiness you're right you broke down the different chemicals that just that just that piece of chocolate you know uh releases in your body and so it makes sense like of course we get addicted to feelings too because like we get addicted to simple things because of like because it cre- creates a feeling but right i've never looked at it in the way of like what am I addicted to? Cause like you, you don't walk around being like, yeah, I'm addicted to happiness. Yeah. I'm addicted to being mad. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? I, I got it. That's I'm fine. addicted to feeling like a victim. I like that shit. I like feeling sad all the time. No, we didn't say that. It just sounds so <laughs> ridiculous, but yeah, yeah, when you recreate, when you see the pattern, when you recreate scenarios, either in your head or, or in your, in your physical world, like you are addicted to it. You just can't even see it. Right. In the, but the best way you said it is looking at what you say to yourself all the time too. It's like, I have done that too, where sometimes I'll be like, why do I keep telling myself this? Like, Ugh. Oh, That's <laughs> I, not true. I don't want to keep telling myself this. Stop telling yourself this. Like, you know, and then it's like, you start looking deeper, but you know, I never look at it like in a, addiction to either a feeling or a saying that I tell myself a lot it's a good way to look at it it's Mm -hmm. it's thought provoking well the nice thing about it if it's an addiction at least I know that it's manageable then yeah you know like it's it's something that I can like okay so clearly this isn't helpful but if I'm addicted to it then I can be like oh well, why am I addicted to it? What am I covering up? What do I need from it? Right? Like, I think a lot of times, like, even the fact, like, being a victim in somebody's story, too, is, you know, one of those things that we build in our head, a story we build in our head. And we, oh, it was right there. Um, let me think. It was, what was I going to say? It's right there and I can see it as a picture, but I can't like pull it from the ether. Describe the picture. Uh, it's something that we would do. Like I'm so, okay. So like I'm supposed, almost like a martyr. Like I'm supposed to be worried if I'm a good person. 
Right. Like I have to worry about my child and I have to overcorrect my child to make them a good child or else I'm not a good parent. Like I have to tell Trinity to look both ways before she crosses the street because if I don't tell her that I'm a bad parent, like that kind of scenario, like I have to do this way because if I don't do it this way, it makes me not, I'm not acting right. I'm not, not acting right according to my domestication, right? And that's where I had a really problem because I'm like, well, I'm supposed to do it this way, but I feel like I need to do it this way. And I think that's what's the real hard part about it is because we're so, we're so safe over here. We know exactly how this one goes, bad or good, bad or good. We know, we know how it goes. Mm -hmm. It's really safe. Everybody's done this trench. We can walk a line with everybody else, whether we're miserable, whether we're happy, it doesn't matter. We know how that story goes because everybody has done that trench. They walk that line. That's why they say to take the path less taken because that's where you find your authentic self. That's where you, and of course it's more work because am I going to fall down? Yeah. But the great thing about falling down is I get strong enough to pick myself back up. And then I learn from my mistakes or whatever I've learned from that part to keep continuing to walk that trail. And the next time I see the same thing, I've gotten wisdom and I can either adjust my whatever, like whatever I'm stepping over or whatever I'm doing not to fall again. Right. Right. But you have to fall. You have to make a mistake. You have to. Well, I feel like you're giving us again another like great move into the third agreement is which is don't make assumptions. Don't make like, assumptions. But by, by you you're you're assuming, right? You're like assuming. Oh how how often do you think you know something without actually knowing it? Ugh. Uh, yeah uh-huh I read that and I was like well <laughs> okay I'd like to think I know it all just you know <laughs> absolutely like I, I think you and I especially with the way we grew up I think we had to adjust the situation a lot of the time and like was it safe was it not safe kind of thing so we assumed a lot oh, right all the time yeah it was like and, preparing for the worst and in, in, in the most toxic way, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like you're walking forward and you're like, okay, like I have to assume that this is what's going on. Um, Even though I don't technically know. So right now, like where I'm at with assuming is, again, I've got the two tables, scales. I got the one where I'm assuming because this is all my backlog, my history and all that kind of stuff, right? I know A, B, and C because I've gathered all this data so far. This is what my formulation comes out to where over here, I have new people in my life that don't necessarily act like the old people in my life. So now my assuming doesn't quite fit in those categories. Also, a lot of those assumptions are because you've taken so many things personally, right? Absolutely. That's why Absolutely. this is the third agreement, not the not the second one. That's the second one. Most of the time, what's happening is when you're death spiraling, as Nicole and I like to call it like uh -huh. that, our imaginations are extremely vast, man. And oh, it tends so to jump good. to conclusions. And we, it, because we've taken things personally, then we assume we already know what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, because that keeps us safe, right? Oh, if I, yeah. If I can assume what's going to happen, if I can predict the future, I'm safe from it. <laughs> so, so something that I read, too, that was really cool about this, though, that can stop it and something simple that you can do that'll just stop the death spiral is it's so simple. It makes me mad. Just ask for the truth. Ask. That's so scary. You say that's so simple. I feel like that is so scary. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I think that 
if you're not taking something personally, right, you've already done step two, because like, let's be honest, this is really hard to do. And you haven't already assumed that somebody is like doing something bad. You've been able to not take it personally. And then you're not assuming you can ask pretty simply, like, I don't know, like, say you freaking, I'm trying to think of a scenario of something that would, would be in, something that I've asked before to you. Um, where is like, did you mean to say it like this? Did mm-hmm. you, or like, hey, can I just ask you, like, why did you say that? Or like, what was the intent behind it? And then, you know, sometimes because we're trying to make sure we're not sounding coming off a certain way, because right, we're, we're not, you got to over explain sometimes and be like, listen, I am, I'm not saying you did, or I have no assumptions or expectations of what you're going to say. I'm just looking for clarity before I death spiral. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, and sometimes, you know, you get caught up in your own feelings and that whirlwind brings in other people, right? So as you're death spiraling, you're grabbing on for things and then you're projecting onto that person of like, okay, like they clearly don't like me because I'm in a state where I don't like myself because I did something. And now, you know, you project it onto them and then you're like, hey, I just need some clarification. Like, it, I, I just need a grounding moment. And it's like, I'm always like the way in my head, I'm like, listen, I know you're not mad at me, but yeah, yeah, there you go. I'm telling the story in my head that you're mad at me and And I need you to clarify. By doing that though, you give that chance to allow for assumptions to stop, right? To allow for you taking things personally to stop, right? Because the minute that you give that person, you have this openness and this freedom within your mind and your emotions to get clarity. Instead of just believing yourself, you're closed-minded and you're only in your feelings and you only care about what you think and fuck you, Nicole, because you're mad at me. And it's like, well, I actually wasn't mad at you for literally anything. Like, you know, it's like, you give, you give a person to all, you give them a chance. It can strengthen relationships. This one alone, I feel like I saw this as like, when it comes to like experiences you could, you could have and changes that you can experience when doing these steps by doing this, by not taking things personally and not going right into assuming and having that openness with like your best friend, your family member, your partner whomever it may be Mm -hmm. you give that chance you give that relationship another chance to strengthen because you're you're not dragging it down again with your own prison in your brain prison in your brain (laughs) right your your narrator narrator narration there you go is that was i I understood narrator narrator (laughs) your own narration of the situation is being creative, right? Because that's what our brain does. It's creating the story, mm-hmm. you know? And like, to ask questions is fact-finding. Ooh, now, I like that. The problem with my makeup at this point is that I want to be perfect, right? I'm always striving to be perfect. Um. So when I ask questions, I don't feel safe about asking those questions. So then I know that I'm death spiraling. Right. And I do it. I go through it. I surrender to it. But I know that it's not a thing. Right. So I'm working on being brave about asking questions. Like, did you this is the story that I'm telling myself. Did you mean it this way? And I just need it for my own, but I don't want to be that vulnerable, right? Like that one, that's a tough one for me to ask those questions. I can ask you those questions because I trust you, right? Right. People that like, I don't trust. I don't want to ask those questions. I don't want to be that vulnerable with them. Yeah, I get it. It is. This is a hard one for so I, I imagine almost everyone listening to this. If it if it's not if it's easier now, it was hard. It could be hard mm-hmm. in certain situations, right? Like asking questions like that. It's not easy. It's hard to do for to yourself sometimes, right? Like if we're yeah. being really real, you guys, it's hard yeah. to even fucking question ourselves sometimes because we don't want to look at it. No. But like 
you know, going through everything that we've been through this year so far in this podcast, I feel like the more that you start working with on yourself, right? And if you've been doing the work with us and you've been going through all this, the easier it is to start looking at humans as humans and not as, um, a good example is not every woman that is an older than me and could be a mom figure, could be an aunt, could be a grandma figure is going to hurt me the way my mom did. Right. Right. They're just women. They're people. Like it's that same old thing I talk about where kids get out of seeing their parents as just their parents and they start recognizing them as people who have their own wants and needs too. It gets easier. And then also these four agreements, I feel like help so much, man, that when you realize like that you're death spiraling and that you are taking something so damn personally and just assuming based off of all your past experiences, which we all do. And mm-hmm. it's very normal. Mm-hmm. It's hard to be like vulnerable and say, did you mean to do that or say that? Because, or you don't even have to say, because you just got to simply ask. And it's hard to be like, a s- hope that they don't take it personally. Hope that they don't assume that you're just using that to hurt yourself to make them look like the bad person right 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 especially because like what i'm trying to sift through in my my thinking my feeling and my past my filter yeah so as i'm trying to alchemize it and take it all apart this is why i have to ask questions because like what i feel is this right and i we know how sensitive i am we know like like as somebody walks in and my heart hurts i know their heart hurts right like i know this stuff but there are some things where they get a little the water gets a little muddy and i don't know how to see through it right and that's where i need like grounding or like um to ask the questions so i can move through it and then be a little bit more um have a little more wisdom really you know talking about this one just makes me always it makes me realize how much I really always forget the fourth agreement and how I always forget though like how how validating it can be in a way and almost encouraging in a way Mm -hmm. and it's the always do your best one but I've never looked at it in the way of like you can't do more than you can do You can't do more than your best. And when you're exhausting yourself, you're not respecting your limitations and you're trying to show, you're trying to show up as more than you are. That's not you doing your best. And like, that's very, it feels very validating and almost encouraging because I feel like the two agreements, the first one, I feel like can be easier, right? You can watch your words. You can become more aware of them, but the the two the two the second and the third one I feel like have so much behind them our traumas our past our feelings our thoughts all of it all together is like the assumption and the person taking things personally and the third one that fourth one's just kind of like they're like rooting you on of like hey do are you doing your best in this moment if so then that's enough well that's the big thing because when he talked about the judge and the victim where the victim you know the judge judges and the victim gets punished right and then we also judge people and punish them accordingly according to our book of laws is what he said right so this one like it was so good to hear that kind of thing it was like even if your best is at 10 percent that's your best your best is not going to look the same every day God, no, not even every other minute. No. And that's the great thing about it is like, you know, and I think as hairdressers, we really do this every day because we have to, right? Yeah. We we do our best every day because people wouldn't actually come back for a haircut if we did oh, it, right? Right. But again, that best, as you well know, looks different every day, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that helps because we've lived that part so it is it does kind of like help of like okay like today I'm doing my best and it does I'm tired I realize I'm tired I realize that like uh maybe a little depression has set in and I'm a little bit down and that's what my but I still got out of bed like that's still my best even if you didn't get out of bed like this is my best for today right and that's what you do 
And it's like so validating with the death spiral part too. It feels good because it's like the moment that you realize you do all of that, you you've assumed <laughs> you've taken everything personally and you're aware of it, dude. That that shit can get to you because then you start becoming aware of everything around you, not just what's internal, right? You Uh say you hurt somebody because you were spewing out poison when you were taking this personally and you, you were assuming and you weren't you being impeccable with your words. So then you go to the fourth agreement of do your, do your best. And it's like, okay, what's my best look like in this moment? My best looks like taking responsibility for apologizing. If I need to, my, Mm -hmm. my best looks like, you know, finding my integrity and being somebody who can be truthful and align my actions with my words. So if I'm going to say I'm sorry and I'm going to take responsibility for that, that means that I'm going to be aware of it now. That means that mm-hmm. I'm going to do my best to not do that again. I'm going to do my best to be aware of this before it's just I keep spewing out poison again. And right. also what that's going to do too is it it's just it gives you this reality check almost with yourself. You start questioning yourself. This is where these agreements go into deeper things we've talked about where you start looking at like, like after you've made amends, say like Nicole and I, I got, we got in a fight because I got bitey with her about something I took personally. And then I'm aware of it. I apologize. And then I start looking into it. It's Mm -hmm. that's when those questioning, that questioning starts happening of like, what triggered that? Where did that come from? Like, what Mm -hmm. did I, what didn't, why did that happen? You know, Mm -hmm. It, it can just lead to so many more things. So that's why I love that last freaking agreement of do your best okay now my best looks like this I wasn't at my best just then but now my best looks like this (laughs) yeah and your your judge your inner judge that is going to enforce the book of laws that we've written doesn't have so much power of you because you are doing your best right like the time that we're critical is like well I didn't do my best because I didn't put all my all in it and because like whatever right right now I think the one thing that we have to be careful about is your personal best is not going to be my personal best, right? We're not going to compare who's doing better, right? Like that's for you to figure out nobody else to, right? And you could probably go to a therapist and like, you know, have them help you guide you through some things, which is always good to like clear the water up a little bit and make sure it's like, you kind of get your footing on down and like that way you start to realize what the best is to get you going. Right. Um, But doing your best will help all the other things fall into place. Absolutely. I feel like you start valuing yourself more. You start like caring about yourself more. Like even with all four of these agreements, you really start creating like a better personal relationship with yourself because you Mm -hmm. start like understanding yourself in different ways because these four agreements alone lead to so much more like I like we said we're gonna we could go on and on for the four agreements I feel like each each one of these could go deeper but it's like you really honestly I feel like the four agreements what it's done for me is it's made me hyper aware of where my pains are at where my trauma still lies Mm -hmm. um where Mm -hmm. happinesses are right because like even like things that I used to get personally sometimes you'll hear it a little bit but then you don't do anything you hear don't assume or don't take it personally and then you're like proud of yourself you're like go me like I didn't take that personally and good thing I didn't because that actually really had nothing to do with me right you know and it it, you just start becoming you start loving yourself more is what I'm trying to get you know it's so funny you said that because I was thinking the same thing this makes it really easy to start really loving yourself because you're having this conversation with yourself about a was I being impeccable with my word b was I am I taking this personally am I assuming and am I doing my best and you're really having this conversation with yourself and it creates this friendship with yourself that will just make you more compassionate with other people because then you can go back to your agreements and go, okay, did I, was I honoring these? Did I honor these? What, you know, that kind of thing. And I think it, it is a really good way to fertilize that ground for that self-love that we really need. I agree. And you know what you've, 
the way you just said that made me realize like I, I saw an article where this person was talking about how to implement it and they were but they of course we were we're back, we're back on journaling and I feel like even just alone asking the four questions like you just did it to yourself but you could be journaling it could help so much because which I've never thought about doing that and using them as prompt questions because I feel like it could right, right. make you really deep dive into a feeling that you're having or a situation that happened that you have feelings around. You start, you could get deeper and deeper through journaling it because you'll start seeing it on paper and being like, holy crap, like I said, I feel like this because of this. And then you can start really getting mm-hmm. into it. Because I saw well, that you could take it all the way down, down to the root cause and then heal it yeah that's what it needs to be yeah exactly and i i saw they have like there's like people that have done journal prompts for this specifically but i just never thought about just using the four agreements as questions for a journal prompt (laughs) it's actually a pretty pretty brilliant idea of like like if you're having a hard time journaling it makes it super i don't know attainable if you like write down the problem you had and then write the four agreements and answer those questions. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I think that could just be really profound in the way of like, you're, you're getting deep into it with four very simple questions. Mm -hmm. Were you impeccable with your word? Well, no, I wasn't. I said this and I did this. And then I told myself this on top of saying this to this person. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. and then i assumed and then and i, I took everything personally you're basically taking your toilet death spiral out of your yeah. head and putting it on paper putting it on paper and then you can see it in yeah. real form cool which helps it helps take it out it helps like you take out look at it refine it remove the branches that are dead so new growth can happen and then put it back in and you know that's how we do that yes well i think that's it well i think that's the four agreements and i think we're gonna end this with a prayer from nicole okay hold up i lost it i gotta find it again nope i got it nope and we're back and we're back (laughs) Well, it had closed down and I was like, wait, come back. (laughs) Okay. So this is at the end of the book and it's the prayer for freedom. I feel like I need to make this closer. Okay. So the prayer for freedom today, creator of the universe, we ask you to come to us and share with us the strong communication of love. We know that your real name is love. That too have a communication with you means to share in the same vibration the same frequency that you are because you are the only thing that exists in the universe today help us to be like you are to love life to be life to be loved help us to love the way you love with no conditions with no expectations with no obligations without any judgment. Help us to love and accept ourselves without any judgment, because when we judge ourselves, we find ourselves guilty and we need to pun and need to be punished. Help us to love everything you created unconditionally, especially other human beings, especially those who live around us, all of our relatives and people whom we try so hard to love. Because when we reject them, we reject ourselves. And when we reject ourselves, we reject you. Help us to love others just the way they are with no conditions. Help us to accept them the way they are without judgment. Because if we judge them, we find them guilty. We blame them and we have the need to punish them. Today, clean our hearts of any emotional poisons that we have. Free our minds from any judgment so that we can live in complete peace and complete love. Today is a very special day. 
Today we open our hearts to love again so that we can tell each other, I love you without any fear and any real and really mean it. Today we offer ourselves to you. Come to us, use our voice, use our eyes, use our hands, and use our hearts to share ourselves in a communion of love with everybody or everyone. Today, Creator, help us to be like you are. Thank you for everything we've received this day, especially for the freedom to be who we are, who we really are. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. I'm glad that's in there. I like it. It was when I uh, read it or, you know, when it was read to me, I guess uh, it was like, these were in here. This is so beautiful. <laughs> Couldn't hear it before. <laughs> right. Right. Well, all right, my friends, I believe that is our soft dive into the four agreements. I know that felt like a lot. Like I said, read the book. Um, there's even more, but we'll go into it further in the future. And our next episode is on silence and peace. Oh, she'll be a good one too. I always think they're all good. So, alrighty, my friends, Same. you have anything else for them? No, go out and buy the book or write or uh, the guy who reads uh, Audible is really good too. I think he's uh, Peter Coyote or something like that. And it's just a, it's a very pretty, he's got a very pretty voice and I like listening to it. So it's, it's just a really good read and I hope it helps. Yeah, me too. All right, my friends, we shall see in the next one, you freaking heathens. Bye heathens.